Darwin's idea takes us all the way from physics and chemistry, the world of lifeless, meaningless, purposeless matter, all the way to the most uh, exalted purposes and meanings from, from poetry and ethics to carbon atoms all in one picture. And that unifies the, the world and the world of inquiry, I think, unlike any other idea. Uh, before Darwin, uh, it was not only hard, I think it was impossible to imagine how this gap between the living and the non-living was really filled in. And now we have a pretty good understanding of not only what the materials and the structures are, but how it got that way. And that's what's really impressive. Well, I think Darwin would realize that human beings have evolved hardly at all genetically since he published his book. What has evolved, of course, is our understanding of the process. And that's evolved by cultural evolution and by just the, the tremendous developments of science, uh, which I'm sure he would be thrilled, uh, beyond thrilled, to see uh, how much of this process is now understood. Um, after all, he didn't have the concept of the gene. Uh, he was, quite frankly, baffled by how evolution could not get swamped by so-called blending inheritance, where everything sort of mixes together to produce mush. Um, now we have a very clear understanding of that, and he would have been thrilled by that. Uh, but even, even uh, uh, more than a half a century after he published The Origin of Species, William Bateson, the great geneticist, early 20th century geneticist, couldn't imagine and said it was inconceivable that what he called nuclear chromatin could be the material basis for heredity. Well, that's DNA. And he just couldn't imagine how it could be, because to him, that seemed homogeneous under all known tests. It seemed to be just too simple. Well, now, of course, we know <laughs> that that nuclear chromatin has <laughs> in the case of human beings, uh, a, a, a double helix molecule with three billion base pairs in it, and it's copied into every single cell in our body. That's stunning. He couldn't imagine that. Well, there's simplistic ways of doing it, and there's less simplistic ways. Uh, and let's push ahead firmly and uh, avoid the huge oversimplifications and settle for the useful oversimplifications. Uh, of course it's complicated. Life is complicated. Uh, if if uh, biologists had been dissuaded by natural naturalists, people, you know, if those people who'd been studying the orchid and the beaver and the honeybee and the, and the elm tree and the, and the perch uh, had said, oh, Mr. Darwin, uh, my species is much, much, much too complicated ever to be uh, explained by your theory. Uh, first of all, they would be wrong. <laughs> uh, and uh, yes, life is complicated. Uh, culture is complicated. Minds are complicated. Uh, but they're not so complicated that we can't do uh, good analyses of what makes them complicated. <laughs>